My name is Mike Archdeacon, Claude Saji is in the South Florida Learning Center and I'm incredibly excited to tell you a little bit about this system and show you some of the things. This has been a project, there's some people that are really close to it, Dan Grupo, Milton Torres, Vivian, uh, Sharon Brown before she left Stryker. Myself, Claude Saji and Pierre Guy very much attached to this. This is our baby and we're really excited about it. We think this is going to change pelvic surgery. So I hope you guys will be as excited as we are. What we're going to do is Karen and I are going to show you some of the instruments, some of the equipment, and how it's designed to be used on the sawbone. And then we'll flip over to Claude, and Claude will then show you in the cadaver. So you can kind of get the idea on both of them. And then if we hopefully have time, we'll try to answer some questions. We can certainly do that uh, in between things today. So the first thing I want to show you, what we're really excited about is the, uh, the retractor system is designed so that the retractors kind of go in in order. And the first one is what's called the pubic tubercle retractor. And that retractor is going to go in underneath the rectus. And then we'll pin, it pins in place. And that's a really nice feature, which uh, helps keep the retractor in place. They're radiolucent, so we don't have to take them in and out yet, number two. The number two is, does not have a pin, because this one goes up over the lip of the acetabulum. And it helps reflect the musculature in the vessels so we can see the, the uh, dome of the acetabulum. All right, I can't pin that one in, but Claude will show you where it goes, and Karen will give us a hand by holding it. The number three retractor is designed, we call the iliac vessel retractor, is designed to go up in the fossa, the iliac fossa, and retract the iliac vessels and the psoas muscle. And, and we'll assume that this is sort of where we want it, and we'll pin that one in place. Okay, you got another pin, Karen. Thank you very much. There you go. And then we'll bounce over to Dr. Saji in just one minute. So what happened here is we pulled the rectus out of the way, we've lifted up the rectus and the psoas muscle, and we pulled the vessels out of the way, and then looking in this window from this view, you can see as we dissect the whole quadrilateral surface, the dome and the acetabulum, the greater sciatic notch. And then this next retractor, which we're very excited about, is the uh, suction retractor. And this fits down in the lesser sciatic notch, or right along the spine, and it's got a suction tubing on it, so it drains by gravity, it drains the bottom of the pelvis. So the blood that accumulates in the bottom of the pelvis is drained out. And this pulls the bladder and the pelvic contents out of the way so we can see this whole field. Now I think this would be a good time to transition over to Dr. Saji and we'll let him, in this predissected cadaver, uh, walk through the same uh, placement of, of the clamps, or I'm sorry, the retractors. Claude, are you ready? Always ready. Good morning, everybody. So what we've got here is the anterior abdominal wall muscle or the rectus muscle. And normally what we do is we're going to take this and we're going to split it right down the midline. Like Mike was saying earlier, in order to be successful in this exposure, we have to take the rectus muscle and really turn it and flip it out of the way so that we can see what we're doing. The first retractor that we're, we're going to use is going to come in here and we're going to place it just lateral to the pubic tubercle, which is right here. We're still medial to the acetabulum, and so what we're going to do, as you saw, is put the wire in safely, medial to the acetabulum, that will hold the retractor in place. The second retractor that Mike showed you is the acetabular wall retractor. The rectus is here above us, and the iliac vessels are right below. And it's really important for the visualization and the safety of the patient to keep those vessels well out of the way. So what we're going to do is come underneath the vessels with the retractor and gently hook the retractor on the anterior lip of the acetabulum, which is right here, and then bring those vessels and the rectus further out laterally. The acetabulum, uh, the hip socket, is right underneath this bone here. This is the pelvic brim, and what we want to do is keep working our way posteriorly in this section, and as we do that, we're going to get in underneath the iliopsoas muscle, which is back there. This is very important, not just for visualization, but also for safety. To get as far back as we can, we need to lift the iliopsoas muscle 
out of the way, and this will allow us to see right back to the lateral portion of the sacroiliac joint. In order to stabilize this retractor, we'll place another one of the stabilizing pins into the receptacle in the retractor to hold it out of the way. And again, like Mike mentioned, these are carbon fiber retractors, so once they're pinned in place, we don't have to take them out in order to get good visualization with the fluoroscopy or the C-arm. Because it's such a deep hole and the lighting is difficult, it's a little difficult to see, and in fact, this is one of the issues or the problems that we tried to get around with the new system, and that is the light pipes. The light pipes are going to attach to the carbon fiber retractors and help us with illumination of the surgical field in the wound. The light pipes snap right into the retractors and are held in place with the small slots and the clips on the light pipe itself. This is really advantageous for us because what we used to have to do is wear a headlamp. Now we can take the headlamp off and you can see how well these light pipes illuminate the wound. Now what we're going to do, and I'm hoping that you can see down into the depths of this wound, and that is expose the obturator neurovascular bundle, which is right here. The white structure is the obturator nerve, and directly underneath that is the obturator vein. We need to mobilize safely these structures so that we can expose the quadrilateral surface, which is right here, and that's the medial wall of the acetabulum. The other structures that often get in the way with this exposure of the posterior column and the quadrilateral surface is the bladder right here. And so the next retractor that Mike showed you, which goes into the base of the wound and the suction retractor, is also designed to help push the pelvic viscera out of the way to improve the exposure of the posterior column and the quadrilateral surface. You can see how the retractor hinges into the greater sciatic notch. The other thing that's really nice about this retractor is that we can hook suction up to it. And if you take any suction tubing with a small plastic attachment, it fits right into the retractor. And then when you put the retractor back into the greater notch to push the pelvic viscera out of the way, the suction is at the base of the wound. This is advantageous for us because as blood fills the bottom of the wound, and tends to pool by gravity, it limits your visualization. But if you have the suction tip attached to this, you can see how it nicely is gonna continually remove all the fluids and the blood from the base of the wound, and that really helps to improve the visualization for us as well. That's great, Claude, fantastic, thank you. So you can see that really helps us with the exposure. It makes it less hands in a small space, and it allows us to start working. The next step is using the instruments that have been designed specifically for this approach. We've used instruments for a long time, but they've been modified to make it easier. One, they're longer, because this is an angled picador or ball spike. This is a 15 degree angled picador, there's a 30 degree angled picador or ball spike. And we use these to move fragments around, like to reduce the quadrilateral surface. We'll come in at an angle and uh, we, can, we can lift up the posterior column. Karen, can you grab the straightening for me? But these are very nice because of the angle, they, they allow us to push it in here without sliding on the bone. This is the traditional straight ball spike pusher, and you can imagine it coming in at this angle, trying to lift the bone up and things, it'll skive or slide off, and the new ones allow us to manipulate the bone fragments more easily because they're angled and designed, they're long enough to fit in the wound. The next instrument that we're really excited about is the spike screw inserter. And this is a, a device that we can use like a ball spike pusher to reduce a fragment. And then we can, because of Ural's cannulated technology, we can put a screw through this. We can load up a washer on the washer stand. We'll load it up. Now it's loaded in the device. We put the centering sleeve in. And let's just assume I'm reducing this right here and I want to put a lag screw in right here. I'm coming in through the wound. I have it reduced. You can see the instruments are pretty long because they have to work through the cannulas and we use a lot of long screws. So now I'm going to put this screw in. I'm working through the wound as Claude has exposed it. Wait, we're going to put that washer in last year. So we're drilling, and these are, these are calibrated so we can measure right off the, uh, the device. Now, we only have a few screws, and for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you. This is another great feature, that we can just drop the screw in, and it seats, 
and I'm not going to use power today, but you can use power. It's self-aligns. So we're going to put this screw down, and I'm moving kind of quickly as not to waste your time, but you'll see that I'm able to hold the reduction, and sometimes it's a small space, and getting a ball spike in, a drill, and the screwdriver and things is tight. This allows you to do it with less hands in a small space. We don't drop the screws or the washers in the wound, which happened all the time before. And secondly, this sleeve protects the soft tissues around us, the bladder and the vessels. You can see now that that washer and screw went in, and it's completely reduced without doing anything but one hand holding, one hand drilling and screwing. And that's a really nice concept for us. That, uh, that said, I think we'll go back to Claude and let him uh, move through those instruments in the pelvis. And Claude, do you want to show the bending concepts before we come back over here? Sure, absolutely. Here we've got the spike ball pusher. Some people call it a picador. And it comes with and without the washer. The reason it's bent is that it comes it at an angle. And the angle is important so that we're not skiving off the quadrilateral surface, which we're tangential to. It's a weak bit of bone. It's thin, and it can easily fracture. So we use the spiked washer or the foot plate on the end of the picador so that we can increase the surface area for contact and better able to reduce the posterior column and the quadrilateral surface without having the risk of fracture. We can work either above or below the nerve to protect it. Next, I'd just like to show you the spiked screw inserter in action. Again, you can work either above or you can work below the nerve, but this is a frequent area where we need to put a lag screw. We've got pelvic viscera and nerves in the way that we need to protect, and we don't want to wrap those up with the drill bit and injure them. So the spike screw inserter is nice because we can drill through the spike screw inserter, protecting the nerves and the pelvic viscera. We can measure right off of the cannulation in the spike screw inserter with measurements on the drill bit so that we know the length of the screw and the depth of the drilling. And once we have it drilled and measured, we actually take the drill out the inner cannulation out, and then that allows us to place the screw right in the spike screw inserter. The reason that's nice is that we frequently try to balance the screw on the end of the screwdriver. We'll drop the screw right into the wound, and this allows us to put the screw into the screw inserter and then follow with the screwdriver and place the screw nicely into the hole without having injured any of the vessels like that. The nice thing is that you can load a washer right into the spiked screw inserter and the washer will sit right at the end of the spiked screw inserter so that when, when the screw comes down through the spike screw inserter, it will deploy and take the washer with it all in one go. Now we're going to show you plate contouring. And this is something else we've improved upon with this new plate bender. In general terms, there are three types of bends that we put on a plate. First, we have the side to side curve of the bend, which is demonstrated here. And that's usually the first one that should be performed. The second one is the hills and the valleys, or the flexion extension of the plate which is demonstrated like that. And then finally, the third bend in the plate is the twist to change the contour to match the relative topography of the, the pelvis. And this new bending iron that has the ball to stabilize into the plate that prevents you from dropping it on the floor is a significant improvement to this system because the plate is held firmly in the one bending iron so that it doesn't get dropped. That's excellent, Claude. Thank you. Another, uh, another nice innovative product is the plate screw or is the uh, plate holder. And this device screws into the plate. It's uh, not yet, it'll be released, I think, next month. And, uh, but it screws into the plate and allows us to put the plate in. In the past, we had to hold it with a pair of pickups 
a coker clamp or something, and it, it gets in the way. It's just more things you're trying to get in the wound. And Claude will show you in the cadaver, but we put this in the wound. In this particular plate, you have to be very careful of the nerve. It has to go behind the nerve and back to the back, and you can see it's fairly nicely contoured, and I can get it in place, again, with, with either myself or someone holding that for me. Karen, do you mind being the assistant and holding? You can see you can put the plate in pretty good position. Similar to the, the spike screw inserter is we, we have the cannulated plate screw inserter. And this works with the same concept. It's got the centering sleeve for the drill. I can work into the wound and I can center the plate kind of where I want it. Relax just a little bit. Get it where I think it goes. And then we'll put a, we'll put a screw in that. We'll do the same thing we did before. Okay, I got it now, Karen. So we'll assume that the plate's sort of where it belongs here. We got it where we like it, and we're going to put a screw in. And again, just as Claude was showing you, we can, we can drill it, if you don't hit the table to your side. Take out the centering sleeve, put the screw in, and then normally we'd use some power to make it a little faster. But again, as, as Claude showed you, we can screw that in place again through the cannulated instruments without having the soft tissue envelope get in the way. And this is behind the acetabulum. So we'll just screw this down quickly, and I'll show you. That'll hold the plate in position. You can see it's fitting very nicely the quad off surface. So now that's done, and then Karen will release, or I'll release the plate holder, and that'll been out, can come out of our way. And if we need to, we can use the ball spike to maybe position the plate a little bit more. Say we're going to move it over like that or so, and we can put a second screw in in a similar manner. We line it back up, and we can put a screw in. And we can kind of work our screws around underneath the nerve, which Claude will show you, or along the pelvic brim, using this plate screw inserter, it protects the soft tissues very nicely. This is the suprapectineal plate, and then we have the infrapectineal plate, which I'm, just for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to take the other one out, but it fits along the retro or infrapectineal surface and has a tab that folds over the top. So I think you guys can kind of get the idea how that fits. Let me get my hand out of the way. Uh, there we go. That's a little better view. So here's the suprapectineal plate with screws along the posterior column right here, along the pelvic brim. And then imagine this is the infrapectineal plate is going to sit with screws along the posterior column and behind the sciatic buttress region and out here on the retroramus surface. So Claude, we've sort of demonstrated uh, on the saw bone, maybe you could show putting in, uh, since I just did the suprapectineal plate, if you want to do the infrapectineal or whichever one you want to do. Can we go back to Dr. Saji, please? All right, so what I've got here is the infrapectineal plate. So this plate will lie below the pelvic brim, not like the plate that Mike just showed you. You can see that it's contoured to fit on the inside of the pelvic brim with an extension that comes down along the quadrilateral surface and onto the posterior column. The plate screw insertion handle allows you to insert the plate just lateral to the nerves and nicely control the plate and position it and hold it where you want it while you're putting the screws in and also to ensure that the correct size has been chosen. The nerves back here, we slide the, the plate just lateral to the nerves. It sits along the quadrilateral surface and then we can use the plate screw insertion device again to protect us from having the pelvic viscera and the nerve damaged by the drill and also to nicely position the screw into the plate. So we're going to use the plate screw insertion handle to put a screw into the most posterior hole of the plate and this is just lateral to the sacroiliac joint. This device works just like the spike screw inserter in that there's markings on the drill bit and you use the cannula and the handle to drill, guide, and also measure for the length of the screw. Once we get it drilled and we have our length, we're going to take a 26 millimeter screw here. And there's something important that you're going to want to tell your surgeons at this point that is different than the spike screw inserter, but using the plate screw insertion handle, you have to be careful and as the screw is being deployed and getting down near the plate, the screw head, if it goes too far, can actually trap the screw insertion handle into the plate and you won't be able to pull the handle out of the plate. So there's a yellow mark on this power screwdriver that tells you 
when to stop so that the screw head does not capture the screw insertion handle and the plate. Once the screw is almost completely deployed and you've stopped at the yellow mark, the screws advance the remainder of the way without the screw insertion handle in place to avoid capturing the screw insertion handle inside the plate with the screw head. All right, now we're, we're going to remove the plate insertion handle. And you can see that with the pointed picador or ball spike pusher, we can steer the plate and fine tune the positioning of the plate before we put in our second screw. Before we put in another screw and change the position of the plate, what I'd like to show you is the new depth gauge that we've developed specifically for this portion of the case. Here we're placing a screw down at the most inferior aspect of the plate, which is a difficult spot to get to because it's so low on the posterior column and deep inside the wound that the angle is difficult to measure off of. So we have a new angle depth gauge that we've developed specifically for measuring down along the posterior column and the lower aspects of the quadrilateral surface that helps you turn the corner. And the nice thing about this depth gauge is that it acts like a syringe and it's a one-handed tool or device. So we're going to place the depth gauge into the hole here. And you can see how, just like the bent picador, it turns the corner at the bottom of the wound to get a better trajectory for measuring the screw. Final thing that we should show you here is the in situ bending iron. And you can see how that this plate is laying off the bone and also has this more superior flange that we like to bend over the superior ramus in the pubic body. And this bending iron allows us to do that with the plate in situ so that we get a more custom bend to the plate once it's already in and it contours to the actual surface and anatomy of the pelvis rather than having to do it outside of the patient and getting this bend wrong. In order for this device to work correctly, we have to have another screw in the more anterior aspect of the plate right where we want the bend to occur. And so we're going to use the plate screw insertion handle to place another screw here in the most anterior hole of the plate just behind the pubic body. You need to be careful, you don't want to advance this too far. Again, we can measure right off the drill bit with the graduations and the cannula. And we're going to drop our screw down the insertion handle, and we're going to screw it in just like the other two screws you saw previously. And remember not to go all the way with the plate screw insertion handle, but you can see how the screw will bring the plate down to the bone nicely for us. So once the plate is down nicely to the bone at the fulcrum, we take the in situ bending iron and then using it like a joystick, we can bend and contour the plate right over the pubic body and the superior pubic ramus. The bending iron has two different ends, one end having a bend to it and the other end being straight, depending on what part of the pelvis and anatomy you're in and how much bend you want to get. Thanks, Claude. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'll try to, uh, I've got the pelvis turned around here. Let's see if I can change it so you can see the, the plate that he just put in on the saw bone. I'll try to hold it for you just so you can kind of get the idea. Thanks, Karen. So there, this is the infrapectineal plate that Claude just put in. You can kind of get the idea where it's sitting. All right. And then out in front is this tab 
that nicely bends over the top of the pubic body. Now, I'm going to try to bend it over the top of the pubic body, but the plate is not screwed down. Even with that, you can get the idea. We can bend it over the top and then put screws in uh, to the pubic body, as Claude was just showing you. So those are the, uh, those are the major features uh, of the, uh, the new implants and devices and retractors. The, uh, the one thing I didn't show you is the uh, spike screw inserter it has a large washer on it as well that can be used to give you more surface area as Claude alluded to sometimes you need to be able to have you need more space because of the bone and this one has some holes in it that once you get it in place you could then pin it through the washer as a provisional holding device more or less like a small plate uh, and you can work through it you can put a screw through it if you need to. Dr. Saji thank you for your life-saving surgery.